Chapter 2, Section 1, Congress, Organization. The U.S. Congress is the legislative branch of the federal government. It is divided into two chambers, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Article 1 of the Constitution establishes the structure and powers of each House of Congress. While both chambers participate in the legislative process, any new legislation requires the approval of both the House and the Senate in order to become law. There are some notable differences in their structure and functions. The design of Congress represents one of the major compromises of the Constitutional Convention. While the delegates generally agreed that Congress should be a bicameral legislature, there was vigorous debate concerning the allocation of seats. Some delegates wanted to award an equal number of seats to each state. Most of these delegates were from small states and were concerned that their interests would be overwhelmed by those of large states. Others who supported giving each state an equal voice wanted to protect the notion of state sovereignty. An opposing faction of delegates wanted to award seats based on population. These delegates, mostly from large states, felt that proportional representation was more fair. Ultimately, the delegates compromised and agreed to allocate the seats differently in each chamber. A process that exists to this day. In the Senate, each state receives exactly two seats. While in the House of Representatives, each state receives a number of seats in proportion to its population, divided into legislative districts of roughly equal size. Thus, the Senate was intended to protect the interests of the states, while the House of Representatives was designed to represent the interests of the people. This dichotomy is also reflected in the way the framers chose to handle the election of members to each chamber. Senators were initially chosen by state legislatures, while members of the House have always been directly elected by the people. Since the passage of the 17th Amendment in 1913, senators have also been directly elected by the people. The overall structure and purpose of each House of Congress, however, has remained largely unchanged. To further reflect these important differences, the framers chose to establish different term links for the members of each House. Because the House of Representatives is meant to be accountable to the people, members serve only two-year terms and must seek re-election frequently. Moreover, all terms expire at the same time, meaning that an entirely new House of Representatives is elected every two years. By contrast, senators serve six-year terms, and their election cycles are staggered so that roughly one-third of the Senate is up for re-election every two years, giving the Senate more long-term stability. While the number of seats in the Senate, two per state, is prescribed by the Constitution, the number of seats in the House of Representatives is determined by federal law. The number of House seats, currently 435, has changed over time, but typically the House has had more members than the Senate. As a result, debate in the House must proceed much more formally than debate in the Senate. Both chambers follow similar parliamentary procedures, but one key difference is that debate in the House is heavily structured. Representatives have limited time to speak, and what they say must be on topic. Senators, on the other hand, are generally allowed more time to speak and are allowed to make off-topic statements in order to delay legislation. Article 1, Section 8 sets forth a list of enumerated powers that are shared by the Senate and the House, including the power to lay and collect taxes, the power to coin money, the power to raise and maintain the armed forces, the power to declare war, and the power to regulate interstate commerce. In addition, Section 8 contains a Necessary and Proper Clause, permitting Congress to make any laws that are needed to carry out its enumerated powers, thus authorizing a set of implied powers in addition to those explicitly named. Over time, this clause has been used to expand the scope of Congress's legislative authority. For example, in the landmark Supreme case, McCulloch v. Maryland, 1819, Chief Justice John Marshall held that the Necessary and Proper Clause authorized Congress to establish a national bank. The Necessary and Proper Clause has been similarly invoked to justify federal legislation concerning the variety of economic, environmental, social, and criminal matters. Due to its inherent flexibility, it is often referred to as the Elastic Clause. Although the House and the Senate share many legislative duties, there are some responsibilities that rest solely with one chamber. 
For example, the framers, having experienced taxation without representation firsthand during the colonial period, wanted to keep the power of taxation as close to the people as possible. Therefore, all tax legislation must originate with the House of Representatives. By contrast, the power to confirm the president's judicial and executive appointments and the power to ratify international treaties rests solely with the Senate, giving states some influence over the domestic and foreign policy of the federal government.